So quite a few of you came here because you saw my interview with the creators of the Teal Swan docu-series called The Deep End that's over on Hulu. And if you haven't checked it out, I highly recommend that you watch that interview or listen to that interview that I did with the creators of the docu-series. Because as I watched the series, there seemed to be a lot of discrepancies between what Teal was saying after the episodes and what actually happened on film. And in our conversation, we discussed how things just didn't line up with what Teal was saying and what was actually on camera that no amount of camera tricks or editing could do. But one of the things that I asked the creators before coming on is if they'd be willing to talk about the f potential of false memories that were possibly being implanted by Teal Swan. That's something that they didn't want to touch on. But this is such an important topic and the United States specifically, we've had a terrible history with implanting false memories that I felt that we had to talk about it. So that's why I'm making this follow-up video today. But anyways, if you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I do a bunch of videos on different topics. Sometimes I do video essays, but I love just talking about human behavior, stuff going on in the world and all that good stuff. And if you are a longtime subscriber, let me know what you think about these kind of voice over videos instead of video essays or me being on camera. I'm not sure if you like it and I would love your feedback. Just leave a comment down below. Help me because I make content for you and I just wanna make sure that everything's all right because you know, I like being on camera because I get to make that little connection. But <clears throat> if not, you know, and this works, let me know down in the comments below. Love it, hate it, I don't care. Just leave a comment. All right. So again, if you haven't watched the docu-series The Deep End, it's out on Hulu right now. So Teal Swan, uh, one of the reasons that she got into um, trying to help others, if you will, is because of her own traumatic childhood. And this is actually very common, okay? A lot of people who get into the mental health field uh, or try to help others, a lot of them, you know, either A, they went through something themselves or B, they know people who did. For example, when I worked in drug and alcohol addiction treatment, my personal reason for being there was because I am a recovering addict. I got sober in 2012, but I worked with a lot of people who had a brother, sister, mom, dad, somebody who struggled with addiction. So Teal's story about being, you know, uh, a child, it, it doesn't seem to add up and it actually sounds like something that comes out of a movie. Okay, now something I wanna make very clear, I would never, ever, ever in a million years deny that somebody experienced some sort of assault, abuse, or trauma, unless there was just an amazing amount of inner, uh, evidence to the contrary, all right? So that is not what I'm saying at all. But the circumstances, the story behind it, that is what we need to question. Because again, if you listen to the story, there is kidnapping and being left in a hole for months on end, all right? And what you start to see with the way that Teal works with people uh, who come to her events or they're part of her inner circle is that <clears throat> she tells a lot of people that their issues stem from a traumatic childhood. And when you're in the mental health field, you kind of start to see this, even with licensed therapists and psychologists, sometimes they latch onto a certain explanation for a person's suffering and they go with that, right? They see everything through that lens. For example, if a therapist specializes in ADHD, they'll often see everybody as having ADHD. Uh, if they specialize in depression, they'll see everybody as having some form of depression. This is why some people actually get different diagnoses when they go from therapist to therapist or psychologist to psychologist. But anyways, <clears throat> what really piqued my interest in the potential of implanting false memories was the episode where they talked with Teal Swan's assistant. So when interviewing Teal Swan's assistant, they speak with her and she talks about, she tells the story of how Teal Swan helped her recover these memories that she hadn't remembered. And one of them was her father assaulting her when she was four years old, her mom actually bringing the father in to do this. And it was a form of punishment. And that is something, you know, may have happened. But what she says next, Ian has the interview, raise an eyebrow. She says that at her family events, so not just her immediate family, not just her mom and her dad, but her entire family, like extended family at events, 
when having a barbecue, they would take the children and put them on the barbecue pit, okay? And the interviewer says, wait, they would put you on the barbecue pit? Why? And she, you know, you could see her, her wheels turn just a little. And she says, I don't know, it was, it was a form of punishment. Now, I am a huge advocate of being a skeptic, asking questions, you know, because I believe that truth matters. It's extremely valuable. And we're about to discuss why that is, especially when it comes to false memories. But instantly, you should be asking some questions, okay? Because this is something out of the ordinary. Parents putting children on barbecue pits, okay? This isn't, this isn't like spanking. So putting children on barbecue pits, what's that? To burn them, to punish them. The first question people should be asking is, why are there no scars, okay? But that question either isn't asked or isn't addressed. But as Teal's assistant goes on, she starts to explain how her, her mother got concerned and her mother actually flew uh, down to Utah to get her daughter. And she called the police because as you probably know, Teal Swan gets accused of running a cult. Well, the daughter actually ended up confronting the mom about the abuse that she endured as a child. And she said that her mother denied it. Now, this is when false memories look a lot like conspiracy theories, okay? So I recently just finished an amazing book, probably one of my favorite books on the psychology of conspiracy theorists. It's called Suspicious Minds, I highly recommend it. But one of the chapters, it discusses how when dealing with conspiracy theorists, no matter what happens, it just makes them believe it anymore. So when you deny a conspiracy, it's only more evidence of the conspiracy. So what happens when false memories are implanted it's the same thing. The denial is only further evidence that it happened. And that's why I want to tell you or ask you even to please go out and buy a copy of this book titled Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me. It's by Carol Tavris and Elliot Aronson, okay? This is the best book I've ever read on cognitive dissonance, false memories, uh, terrible practices in therapy. But the chapter I wanted to highlight specifically is about false memories, and it actually dives deep into the satanic panic. So in the previous chapter of the book, before it gets into the satanic panic, it talks about a man named Benjamin uh, Wilmer Kirsky. I can't pronounce his name correctly, but it's something along those lines, but he published a book titled Fragments in 1995, and it was his story about being a Holocaust survivor. And he talks, about a lot of specifics from where he came from, the camp and everything like that. Well, eventually it was found out that this story was completely fabricated, but it was not done intentionally. The man had false memories and he confabulated this story, but nothing checked out. When they went to fact check all of this information, all of it was false. <clears throat> so in the book, Carol Tavris and Elliot Aronson they end up talking about how some people have this sort of imagination that causes a problem. And here's a quote from the book talking about what they call imagination inflation. For those who are trying to remember something that never happened, writing, anal analyzing dreams and drawing pictures, techniques that are staples of many psychotherapists are all methods that quickly conflate imagination with reality. Elizabeth Loftus, a leading scientist in the field of memory, calls this process imagination inflation because the more you imagine something, the more confident you become that it really happened and the more likely you are to inflate it into an actual memory, adding details as you go. Scientists have even tracked down imagination inflation into the brain using, using functional MRI to show how it works at a neural level. Uh, Juliana Mazzoni and her colleagues asked their study participants to tell them a dream and in return give them a false personalized dream analysis. They told half the participants the dream meant that they had been harassed by a bully before the age of three, been lost in a public place, or been through a similar upsetting early event. 
Compared with control subjects who were given no such interpretations, the dream subjects were more likely to come to believe the dream explanation had really occurred, and about half of them eventually produced detailed memories of the experience. In another experiment, people were asked to remember when their school nurse took a skin sample from their little finger to carry out a national health test. No such test existed. Simply imagining this unlikely scenario caused the participants to become more confident that it had happened to them. And the more confident that they became, the more sensory details they added to their false memories, like the place smelled terrible. Researchers have also created imagination inflation indirectly merely by asking people to explain how an unlikely event might have happened. And this is what leads into the next chapter, which is on the satanic panic. So those of you who don't know, the satanic panic was not just this goofy thing that happened in the 80s. You need to understand that lives were ruined. Families were torn apart by the satanic panic. Okay, so I highly recommend you read uh, this book and other books do research about the satanic panic. But basically, uh, a story came out from this daycare center that they were doing satanic cult rituals to these children. They were assaulting them in all sorts of ways, but there was no evidence of it. And as they talked to the, the children, the stories that were coming out were absolutely bananas. They were talking about being taken on, uh, out in airplanes and all sorts of stuff. Well, during this time, it wasn't just the satanic panic, but therapists, there's often periods of time where something becomes hyped up in therapy. And one of the things around this time was repressed memories. So in that chapter, it starts out with this woman who went to a therapist because she was having panic attacks. And the therapist led her into believing that the panic attacks meant that she had a repressed memory of her father who this woman always had an amazing relationship with, had assaulted her as a child. And the woman pushed back on that. She's like, no, that's not possible. My father and I, we've always had an amazing relationship. But the therapist said, oh my God, this just means that it's really in there. So again, this is a form of confirmation bias. And when a therapist, and a lot of these therapists got into a ton of trouble, I believe some even got prosecuted, but, they were pushing this idea on these people. And what eventually happened was there were many, many trials where children were suing their families. They were suing their parents, uh, fathers, mothers. They had to defend their reputation because therapists were implanting memories in these people in the book, it says, under hypnosis, they said their therapist enabled to remember the horrifying experiences they had suffered as toddlers, as infants in the crib, and sometimes even in previous lives. One woman recalled that her mother put spiders in her private area. Another said that her father abused her from the ages of five to 23, and even did this to her days before her wedding memories she'd repressed until therapy. Others said they had been burned, although their bodies bore no scars. So again, I think that's a good place to end that quote because it goes back to Teal Swan's assistant, okay? There are no scars. Now, again, I would never say somebody is lying about assault or anything like that, but we have to take into consideration false memories, especially, especially when the stories are really out there. We have to start asking questions such as an entire family putting children on burn pits. What you start to learn about the satanic panic is that they interviewed, like police actually got involved and they interviewed family members and nobody could verify anything of the sort. And many times there were uh, alibis for where people were when the person was accusing them of these things. And that's why what Teal Swan is doing, because this, like, it's, it's potentially dangerous. And this is just one person we're talking about with her assistant. So who else has she done this to? Who else has she convinced had these repressed childhood memories? But I do highly recommend that you uh, check out that book. They do dive into just repressed memories as a whole. 
when you start to get into it, you start to realize there's very little to no evidence of memories being repressed and different things like that. They've done a lot, a lot of different studies. So why does this happen? You know, I, I guess I want to end there. I'm not really sure. I have some personal theories, right? One of them is just our own suffering and we want answers. When I got sober and when I was trying to improve my mental health, I was looking for anything to explain why I was the way I was, right? And unfortunately, some of us get the wrong answers to that, such as something happened in our past that never actually happened. So I'm sure there are gonna be a lot of Teal Swan fans who watch this video and they say, you can't prove it didn't happen. But what you have to realize is that in the United States especially, there is due process. It is innocent until proven guilty. And we do have plenty, plenty of scientific evidence that you can implant memories into people's heads. So I do ask you to understand because I do think we do need to empathize with victims at all times, but I want you to also have empathy for the people who are being accused of this when there is absolutely no evidence. Like I am a huge advocate for just criminal justice reform because the amount of people who are behind bars because of things that where there was no evidence and the police just wanted to lock somebody up for a crime, like it's, it's terrifying to live in a country like that. So we can't be selective of when we decide to provide due process. You know what I mean? So I do want you to take a look at this and if you need to go back and check out the Teal Swan doc documentary, watch these clips, watch these episodes where Teal Swan tells her own story as well as when the assistant tells her story and ask yourself questions. Ask if there's evidence for this. And you know, I highly recommend you ask yourself, where are the scars? You know what I mean? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. Again, if you're new, make sure you subscribe. Uh, I'm gonna be trying to do daily videos for the next 30 days or so. So make sure you don't miss anything. If you are subscribed, again, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about these voiceovers. Uh, if they're all right with you, totally cool. Let's keep doing them. If you hate them, I'll get my lovely face back on camera. But everybody out there, make sure you're following me on social media at The Rewired Soul. I'm over on Instagram and Twitter. That way you don't miss any upcoming videos. And I just love talking with all of you. All right, but anyways, have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you next time.